Hey guys, um, in this video I'm going to go through the process of joining a computer to the domain. So we're going to want to first of all create a computer account uh, with the same name as our computer that we're going to join. So in most companies you have like a, you know, a naming scheme that you guys are working with. So in our scenario we have like an agent's OU um, kind of simulating like a call center slash technology building uh, center so these this agent OU here is gonna have some workstations so we're gonna populate a bunch of workstations in here but for this quick tutorial I'm just gonna show you how to create a use a computer account and then assign it to the domain so you just right click in the uh, organizational unit you want to go to. So come over here into the details pane and go to new and then just click on computer and then you want to name the computer whatever the name is that that you have it or you can log on to the computer and change the name to this name. So in our case we're going to just name it station 101 and down here um, this what this means is who's allowed to join this computer to the domain so default is the domain admins so we're gonna have to log in as the administrative account for this case because we don't have any users yet and then we're just gonna hit OK and then this computer object is created now so now we can go on to our computer here and power it on All right, so the computer is in now. I'm just going to log in as the uh, local user account. And you're going to want to go down here to your start menu, whether it's XP or Vista or 7 in this case. Just go to your start menu, uh, right click on computer or my computer, and go down to properties. And you can see down here where you can change the name, the domain, and the work group. So go to change settings and just come down here to uh, rename the computer or change the domain and click on change. And the domain here, we're going to join it to our domain, which is called testdomain.net. So testdomain.net. And then this is now where we're going to have to add in a user account from the test domain.net. So we're going to have to use the administrator. Hit OK. Welcome to the domain. And it's going to ask you to restart. So we're just going to go ahead and restart, and then I'll show you how to log in for the first time. All right, so as you can see now, it, you have the uh, please press control alt delete when you uh, turn on your computer. That's just a default group policy. So just go ahead and hit control alt delete. And now you can see you're going to be logging into station 101 as Paul. So what that means is you're logging into this computer as Paul. So we need to change that. So go down to switch user go to other and to log on to test domain now we can type in the username so for in this case see how it switched to station 101 you have to enter in that you have to go your domain uh, backslash user account and then just your password and you're off to the races. So it's going to prepare my desktop for the first time. So this is the first time that the domain administrator has logged into this computer. Anytime a new user logs in, they're going to get uh, preparing your desktop. All right, so we're logged in. Nothing real fancy yet. Um, we're on the domain. So now if we go back to our workstations here, we can just see that it's pre-populated some stuff. It's filled in the operating system so it knows what type of computer we're running. 
what the membership of the computer is so domain computers it's not managed by anybody there's no delegations or trusts there's no remote access signed in for uh, this is like a VPN settings here but that's what you can do with your uh, basic computer account so the purpose of this video is the best practice and this tutorial was pre-assigning or pre-staging your computer accounts um, I'm gonna show you guys in the next video how to um, change the default location for computer and user accounts just so that you know that you don't ever create a user account or a computer account and it ends up in these default containers here because you can't apply group policies to these containers alright so thanks for watching and I hope this helped